let's test our understanding. So a business has decided to invest in a new equipment to replace an outdated one. The machine will cost $5 million and would have an economic life of four years. Writing down allowances of 20% per annum on a reducing balance basis are available for the investment. Taxation of 25% payable one year in arrears. The investment in the equipment will be financed with a four-year fixed interest loan at a pre-tax cost of 12% per annum. Principal repayable in five years' time. The equipment will be sold for $100,000 at the end of its useful life. Alternatively, the business has an option of leasing the equipment over four years at $1.5 million per annum, payable in arrears. We have to evaluate the two options for investing in the equipment and advise the business on the best alternative. Again, we'll start with the writing down allowance. For year zero, that is now, the cost is $5 million. Year one, capital allowance will be $1 million, as in 20% of the $5 million. The tax save will be 25% of the $1 million, which will be $250,000. The writing down allowance will be $4 million, which is the difference. Year 2, capital allowance will be $800,000, which is 20% on the $4 million. The tax save will be 25% on the $800,000, which is $200,000. Writing down allowance will be $3 million, $200,000. Year 3, capital allowance will be $620,000, which is 20% on the $3.2 million. The tax save, which is 25% on the 640000 will be $160,000. Writing down allowance will be $2,560,000. So the asset is supposed to be sold for $100,000 at year 4. That is the scrap value. So we are supposed to deduct it because it's a benefit. So the taxman will not grant you capital allowance on that. So it will give us $2,460,000. The tax savings will be on the total amount which will give us $620,000. Again, taxes are paid subsequent to the year in question. So the tax in year one will be paid in year two. Therefore, the benefit will also be earned in year two. So when we come to the post-tax cost of capital, it will give us 9%. That is the 12% taking the 25% out. That is what we are going to use as a discounting factor. If we are buying, acquisition now is $5 million outflow. Tax savings $250,000 that was supposed to be meant for year one will be recorded in year two. $200,000 meant for year two will be recorded in year three. $160,000 meant for year three will be recorded in year four. $620,000 meant for year four will be recorded in year five. Residual value will be gotten in year four because the asset will live eight four years. So after that, it will be sold. So the money is likely to be gotten or received in year five. So it is also an inflow. So the net for year zero, which is now is five million outflow, zero for year one, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for year two, two hundred thousand dollars for year three, one hundred and sixty thousand dollars for year four, and seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars for year five. The counting factor at nine percent as we just worked out. For now it will be one. Five million now the same five million in value. The discounting factor for nine percent at year one is zero point nine one seven. For year 2 is 0 0.842, year 3 is 0 0.772, year 4 is 0 0.708, year 5 is 0 0.650. The present value will be 5 million outflow in year 0, 0 in year 1, 210,000 in year 2, 150,000 in year 3, 110,000 in year 4, 470,000 in year 5. The net present value buying the asset will be four million and sixty thousand dollars outflow. When we come to the leasing, lease payment was supposed to be one point five million dollars. Now it is being paid in arrears, so we get the asset now. We'll pay a year later. That is how come we are starting from one to four. The other question was in advance, so it will be zero to three. It will be the four-year cycle the same. The discounting factor will be 3.240, 9%. We are not going to add 1 because we are not starting from now. So 9% at 4 years is 3.240, leading to a present value of 4,860,000 outflow. Tax saving will be 
percent on 1.5 which will give us three hundred and eighty thousand dollars it will be paid a year after the current year so it will be two to five because of that it will give us a discounting factor of 2.973 that is nine percent at five years which is 3.890 less nine percent at one year 0 0.917 the present value will now be one million one hundred and thirty thousand dollars the net present value will be three million seven hundred and thirty thousand dollars so in this situation the machine must be leased as a result of it costing lesser than buying now when you lease you have to determine whether the residual value is coming to you the leasee or you go back to the lessor if it will come to you then that's another line of inflow for you if not then we will go by the calculations that we did there might be restrictions with leasing and equipment okay so the lessor can say that you cannot use it in this particular manner that will not be advantageous if you had bought it or if you go in for the asset they might restrict you from getting borrowings additionally you have to check whether the additional benefit that comes with the lease agreement so if you lease is it that the leaseor is going to take care of all the maintenance and support services whereas if you buy it you will be responsible for it that will be extra cash flows and this will be a savings for you so you have to consider both